What do you think humans are? Like, we're programmed? I think we're extremely complicated uh, masses of atoms, and a program is a good analogy for that. Not necessarily that we are definitely in a simulation or anything Where do you like think that. we came from? Uh, well, there's many theories of that. Uh, I couldn't give you any kind of, you know, I humor the, it's kind of meme but I humor the ancient alien kind of uh, Anunnaki theories, but those are just a theory, and uh, I feel that have the most evidence backing them because of the earliest civilization and the uh, ridiculous achievements that they had given their scientific knowledge uh, at the time seems seems to point in that direction that what they say might be true but again I couldn't tell you either way uh, so objectively so if there was an alien species like the Anunnaki would you say the same is true of them? That, like, they're not in control? Like, you, you can extend that to any living being, right? Not just people. I would extend it to anything that doesn't have full <clears throat> knowledge over the variables affecting it and control over it. Whatever falls in that. Well, we have some kind of control over our environment. But, but again, but the control to do so and the ability to understand it. And okay, but if it's a conscious mind, like, then Naki has, like, a conscious mind that would also be like they didn't cho probably didn't choose to be born in the same sense and like they didn't choose their upbringing and the way they developed you know so wouldn't they also be if they're alive would they also be subject to that how could you be alive and not be subject to that if you're omniscient or have full control of the variables and knowledge can you be alive and be degree? omniscient uh, no, I guess maybe perhaps that's a question deep in, in physics that I probably couldn't answer, but it's a theological viewpoint that... Because alive generally I'm not sure. tends to isolate it into like a body, like, and that body has an observation, like it has ears and eyes or what have you, but it's you generally confined to a space, right? So like how not could necessarily. Some if, if something's omniscient, then it couldn't be relegated to a single point. I guess, would it still be alive in that point, though? Like, or to be something else? Uh, like, neither alive nor dead, but... I'm not sure how you would define it. It would be alive in some sense. Yeah. Kind of, okay, like, would a ghost be alive, I guess? Physically alive? Perhaps not. I'm not sure if a ghost, if they actually exist, or really just certain uh, geometrical patterns in some other dimension or what have you, but... Uh, so... When you, just, when you say physical, what do you mean? You mean things existing in the third dimension? I guess... Composed of third dimensional molecules. If you're not confined to a space, so let's say... Say, you, say you're like a, a, a ghost or a poltergeist and you don't have a body. Then but, they would be existing in the fourth dimension. you're still confined to like an area. Like you can like look around you. Like you're seeing from a perspective, right? You're mm -hmm. not seeing everything. Because if you're able to, if you're able to see the whole, the whole thing, like the entire universe and all the intricacies of it, at that point you're not really confined to a. I mean, okay. I guess what I'm saying is, if if you were disembodied and could see everything, could you also still be alive? Would you consider that alive? Yes. Okay. I would well, consider what, that a lot. What do you define as living? I guess I just feel like part of it is implied that you're Every, I think I just, stuck in one spot. I think everything is living. Like rocks and energy. tables? Yeah, because they're all composed of atoms. And an atom is energy in itself. The electron moving around it constantly is what keeps it together. So there is nothing that does not have energy. So and atoms are alive? Yeah. Not necessarily that they're conscious. Is that what you're trying to get to? Yeah, no, I wouldn't say it's conscious, but I feel like I feel like there is a kind of consciousness between every single atom, like everything that composes this universe, this dimension. There is something connected between each atom. Right, but it might not necessarily be consciousness, otherwise an atom would choose things out of its volition. Even if that was predetermined or not, that would still be... Consciousness seems to imply uh, some level of understanding its own existence and acting accordingly.
Yeah, no, it does yeah. It's not... Or understanding that one exists, I guess, perhaps. Yeah, it's not a free base form. I feel like the universe is one thing altogether. Because there's no part of it that can act, like, on its own. It's all mm -hmm. one big mass. If one thing happens... You know, if, an a if a, a meteor flies onto Earth, Earth can't just decide, all the atoms on Earth can't just decide, they don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. It's all part of one big movement. So after hearing this argument, do you, are you swayed in any way towards the idea of determinism, or do you still hold on to free will? How does it make you feel so far? I have you, think have you converted yet? I, th <laughs> I think that there is two ways to look at it, just like there is everything else. I think when you're looking at it from an omniscient point of view, free will is not a thing. But from your own personal perspective, while you're conscious and alive... It's a personal truth. You have, yeah, it's a, from person to person we have free will. Yeah. In our constant action. And yeah. what's happening, like, present time. I think I agree with that. Or it's like, like, I could choose to get up and walk out right now if I wanted to, or I could choose to... Right, but punch but Alex. If know? we conceded the reason you could choose the to. reasons why you choose is more what I'm saying. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll I'll be the first one to admit you choose things all day, and I every action you do is a choice. You know whether I make this is one of Sam Harris's points. Another promoter of uh, determinism was, you know, I got up today and I made coffee this morning. Uh, why did I not choose tea over that? They're both reasonable choices. Uh, and there's, <coughs> there's seemingly no reason to choose one over the other, but either way, you chose one over the other because you, at that moment in time, you valued that thing over the other. So why is it your your value scale that determine if that is what determines uh, what you'll do or what you choose? How can it still be of your free will to do so? Well, it just depends on what you're talking about. If you're looking at it from a perspective where you're stepping out of time. I mean for us as individuals who can't uh, escape the confines of time or at the very least have no idea how to. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. It's a tough cookie. And mm. uh, with that in mind, would that then shape to any degree how you would view others you find detestable or judge morally? Yes, uh, yeah, definitely. Because, well, I mean, I already agreed with what you said, a point that you mentioned earlier. Uh, I don't think you should blame anybody for what they did, especially on their upbringing or what they've... Yeah, you, know, you can't blame someone for something they did if you don't agree with it. Sure uh, you can it. analyze it, and you can think, hey, I disagree with what you did because from my point of view from what I've experienced in my life this isn't going to help you be a better person and it's not going to make you happy so then you could try to help them help them grow and better themselves sure but I don't think it's right to judge somebody because you don't know how they were brought up you don't know what they were told you don't know what's happened to them mm -hmm. so judging them for something that you think isn't right when they thought it was right in that current moment in time I think is wrong